Hello, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Well, Great. can you do so? Great. Hello, Chagatina, anyways. So today we'll be holding a nationalist discussion. We have a special guest here today, Yuso Sultanen from Finland. Yuso, if you'd care to introduce yourself. Uh, hello, so Google it to tell about me. My name is Yuso Siltanen. I'm 18 years old and I'm from southern Finland. I just graduated and I'm soon going to Finnish military. I'm the deputy chairman of Udenman Axel and have been in that role for a couple of years now since our founding. Besides that, I have been active in local youth council activities for a couple of years now. And, very good, very good. And hmm. Udenman Axel, like what is what is your way to our Irish audience who don't like Irish people aren't very aware of Finnish politics, Finnish nationalism. Would you like to explain what UA is? Udenman Axel is a Finnish nationalist youth organization working under an older Finnish nationalist organization called Suomen Sisu. Uh, back in the day when, when we founded our organization, we saw that Finnish youth had a lot of potential that was often wasted because of a lack of network and knowledge uh, because most of the old parties and organizations have drifted away from the kind of action that youth prefers and needs our goal is to equip the nationalist youth of finland with the best tools and uh, as, as, and give them a starting point to give them an opportunity to make a change and in the long term make nationalism the dominant ideology in Finland. Uh, we show this Very goal neat. for... Hmm? Go on, continue, uh, continue. <laughs> yeah, uh, we show this goal, for example, by our slogan, which is Future is Nationalist. Uh, we work towards our goal by organizing all sorts of nationalist youth action, varying from sports to networking events to activism and trainings. Our name is actually a little bit misleading, as Yusimo refers to a region, uh, down here in southern Finland, where our organization was originally launched, even though we now have action across the whole country. The last couple of years working with Udenma and Axel have been quite a ride. We have went from a, sm a very small but titanic uh, friend group uh, to an active and pretty big organization. That's very wholesome. That's very wholesome that it went from a tight-knit friend group mm. to now like a fully fledged nationalist youth organization you mentioned earlier in what you when you were speaking there that uh the mother party is called Swam and sisu yes yes um sisu is an ancient code of honor finnish mm. code of honor am i right in saying that uh what is well, what is um, sisu to you and what is it to uh udenman axel well, Sisu is a little bit hard word to, to translate, but the best I could describe it as is a word meaning resilient and determined mindset. Something that makes you push through the hardships without giving up. We Finns usually consider it to be quite an important feature of our identity. And of course, we have needed it many times in our history with our difficult climate and more than the difficult neighbors. Of course, the most obvious way, like I previously said, uh, our organization ties to the word Sisu is our parent organization, Suomen Sisu, which means Finland Sisu. But besides the obvious connection, Sisu is important to us nowadays, as obviously Finnish youth and Finnish nationalists need Sisu more than ever if we wish to succeed. Luckily, within the last... Mm, uh, luckily, within the last few years of me being in, in my role, I have seen tons of Sisu and tons of strength and motivation in uh, other nationalists. And I strongly believe that we have been blessed with the right people to change our society. Absolutely, yeah. And, and tell us a bit about your role, um, Yuso. Sorry? Tell us a bit about your role in Uden Malaxel. Well, as a deputy chairman, my job naturally requires that I assist our chairman Pyry and do his job when he's unavailable. But besides that, I'm not required to do much specific things, but I do lots of the more general stuff. For example, I do most of the digital stuff like editing and designs and administration of our social medias. I do a lot of traveling around the country when we launch new sub chapters. I have 
organized actually demonstrations like the anti-Russian action from spring in Helsinki and international collaborations are also mostly my responsibility. Very interesting. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned some activities that you would be helping with uh, organizing some activities. What mm. uh, I saw uh, on your Telegram ch yep. channel, I should say, that mm. recently you held a summer camp. Um, would you like to talk to us about your summer camp? Well, uh, uh, it is a yearly yearly event uh, where people from across the whole country come to one place and they do lots of stuff together. For example, uh, we had tons of activities like uh, varying from sports to brainstorming new ideas or annual meeting, just casual having fun playing games like Cards Against Humanity and spending the whole night in sauna. And, Very good, and some more physical activities as well, I saw. Yeah, yeah, we had, I don't know what's the correct English word for it, but like uh, wrestling when you are standing. Then we had stuff like uh, rope pulling and we went to swim, etc, etc. Oh, very good, very good. And I saw you also previously now you've done hikes similar to us. Like mm. we do, we do a lot of hiking, um, yep. whether it be like Wicklow Mountains, you know, Croke Patrick. Croke Patrick would be our uh, our main mm. one. That would be the annual Oigan Oshunach one. Uh, mm. But that's very interesting. And do you think that, um, have you been able to get your point across to the Finnish youth? Well, I'd, um, I'd say that... It has been a little bit, there has been a long period of time when Udeman actually was quite unknown. It was mostly noticed in um, groups that were already political, like obviously everyone in the nationalist scene from the first year have known us and obviously the far left have known us. But for a long per period of time, Udeman actually was quite an unknown organization for the average youth but i think that lately in i'd say last six months to probably a year we have been slowly uh, started to be known by more people and more and more normal people and people who have not never in never been in any kind of political activity before that's very that's very good and you think that um what was some of the most effective ways that you were able to get the message, the Uden Manakseli message to normal people? So in the National Party and in Oigan mm -hmm. we would um we would do banner drops on some of the mm -hmm. main roads and we do banner drops in uh, town centres. Recently, we had a banner drop in Dublin mm -hmm. West. Now, recently enough, I should say, where um, a Garda helicopter mm -hmm. <laughs> came out and a number of Garda squad cars as well, because <laughs> obviously we were we were doing the wrong thing um but how do you how what what is your most effective way of getting your message out what do you utilize the most well naturally uh, in the modern uh, world social media is often the most yeah. useful way of getting your word out we also do stuff like banner drops and we have stickers and we have put posters uh in the public spaces but i think recruiting people from your social circles both in the real life and in social media has, has been the most useful way we have gained new members because yeah agreed it, it would be it'd yeah. be similar to Mm. Um, how would you say, like the banner drops, the the postering, mm. the stickering, that's all brand recognition, that's all name recognition for yep. normal people to notice you. But uh, yep, the exactly. most effective form of recruit recruitment usually is, as you said, from social media, mm. from yep. normal, you know, social circles. Mm. Exactly, and, and that becomes even more important in Finland because people are quite, uh, in Finnish culture, you are, people are quite shy and the threshold for doing anything is quite quite large to say at the least so if people uh, want to join organization it is usually something that they already have a personal connection to 
if you see an organization that is uh, that you have never he heard about before and you know uh, and if you know no nobody in the organization it takes a lots of will and <laughs> courage to actually join the yeah, organization yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in finland uh, like, like i mentioned to you earlier in finland it is quite unrealistic to expect gaining lots of new members by doing things like just giving out flyers etc because people are so reserved they won't join something they have never heard before or something they know nobody from but if you mainly recruit people from your same social circles where they know actually actual members from the organization then it helps a lot yeah and that's a funny thing actually you know for our mm. audience obviously on a more personal level between me and you so me and you so mm. i should say um i showed him that the np lads up in the uh up in the northwest were you know leafleting in uh, letter kenny i think it was and they were talking to the locals getting engaged and you so said to me like that's mad like that's that's yeah. not what that's not that's not very uh common in yeah. finland <laughs> yeah so that was uh, obviously funny mm. Yeah, obviously political parties do that kind of stuff around the elections, but besides that, mm. I would not expect to get much members through activism like that. Very, very interesting, very interesting. Are you hopeful for the future, Yuso? Uh, yeah, definitely. I have in the last few years seen lots of new faces and seen lots of new progress in Finnish nationalist scheme. So definitely I have hopes for the future. And do you think that um, obviously in our circles, uh, immigration, mm -hmm. it's a big thing and what ties in with the future of the youth, and this is relevant mm -hmm. to us, is uh, immigration. What have mm -hmm. the levels of immigration been like in Finland? Because in Ireland over the past 20 years, like it's accelerated massively. And in mm -hmm. the past five years, it's gone into overdrive. What is, uh, what is it like in Finland and what, uh, what effect will it have on the youth over there? Well, we have had quite a similar situation. I think first immigrants or first the larger waves of immigrants came to Finland back in the 90s. I think it was mainly Somalis. And of course, during the last few years, it has just accelerated a lot. Of course, we have had our own share of mass rapes and crime and everything else that other European countries have endured too during the last few years. And especially the migrant crisis years um, one way the, one way it has one very notable way it has affected finland it is that we had our first terrorist attack some years ago in 2017 when an isis inspired uh, jihadist did a knife attack in turku two people died seven got injured and the terrorist was given a life in imprisonment which unfortunately in finland means most most likely something like 12 years it should be higher but very yeah, similar well, to ireland currently yeah yeah, yeah. Um, also the government of turku from what i have understood has been kind of shitty with the way they have remembered the terrorist attack they have had they have made some kind of memorial place or some kind of memorial plate or tree or something like that but it is in very side of the city not in the central or the cap or the middle of turku but in the very side where you only go if you know what you're looking for and don't, you don't just randomly stumble like a st stumble across the memorial plate i also have heard lots of stories from people living close to the accommodation centers telling the, the immigrants behave horribly and are unbelievably unthankful. I remember that back in the day there was once a protest made by the immigrants where they demanded that they will be given better food, which is kind of ironic considering that the food they are being given is the exact same food students and elderly and other people in Finland are eating. And I mean, I 
I have to admit it is not it is certainly not good, but if you are fleeing from a war, it should be more than enough, especially since you could very well just buy your own food. That that's that's almost exactly uh, like yeah. the stories that we're hearing from uh, direct provision centers in Ireland, where. Yeah. Um, where asylum sneakers and asylum scammers mm. will come in and they will try to conjure up a shit story that they're not given adequate food when in the yeah. actual photo itself there sometimes is the food in the background that they're talking that they talking about how they don't have and a lot of yeah. these stories are coming out do you think yeah. that the massive levels of immigration and do you mm. think with the late with the attack that happened in turku mm. what what do you think that young people in finland are feeling like do you think that they're waking up to this is there a bigger uptake in people who are saying no we've had enough this is we're sick of this well the problem with finland is that like i said earlier we are very reserved people a lot of people i'd say actually majority of the people know the things migrants do, they know that the behavior is really bad, but because we are Finns, most people just stay, stay shut up. They don't say anything, they don't comment anything. They just hope somebody else does the uh, talking about the uh, all right. Yeah, it's, I yeah. see what you mean. Talking Problems. about it. someone else does someone else does something. Someone yeah. else talks yeah, exactly. about the issue for them. Okay. Yeah, Finland has always been known for being a pretty safe country, but lately Finland has had quite unforeseen crime involving street gangs. Of course, we we have always had our own biker gangs and organized crime, etc. But never never this kind of American street gang violence like lately. There was a case lately when a gang called Kurdish Mafia did a drive-by shooting near Lepavara, which is a part of town where our organization frequently holds events. There has also been kind of a problem with so-called roadman culture, where violent teens, mostly immigrants, are being violent and robbing people. And actually, I believe that one time I was pretty close to being a victim of this too. It was... It was some months ago, it was probably like 1 a.m. and I was waiting for a bus at the train station and some foreign-looking man with a white ski mask and his hands under his very big jacket started following me. I took quite many turns and he was constantly following behind me, but luckily I got away. That's a pretty grim picture that you're painting at the moment. It seems mm. like as if it's a... Uh... It seems like as if every capital, every major urban center all over Europe, mm -hmm. regardless if it's in the northeast or if it's in the west, like in Ireland, um, they're all succumbing to this mass immigration, this mm -hmm. collage of the strange, where diversity is the new religion, basically. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 a great thing to see organizations such as Uden Manakseli, such as Eugen Oshunuk, that there are mm -hmm. young people in these countries who are saying enough and it's time mm. to reinvigorate the young people of our nation you told me there that um we were talking about Udin Malakseli, but what is it like on the nationalist scenes in finland what um is it fractured is it united would you like to tell us a bit about it well uh, there are actually a lot of nationalist organizations here in Finland. The most well-known groups must be Finns party and the Nordic resistance movement. Um, back in the day, most of our founding members, including me, used to belong to a Finns party's youth wing. But mm. in 2020, the whole organization fell down due to internal conflicts. And I think it highlights very well how fractured the Finnish nationalist scheme is back in, back uh, then. It kind of got into the point where nobody felt like they were safe from being purged or betrayed. Because if anyone said anything that could be deemed ethno-nationalist, for example, to say that Finns should not look like Africans, the party instantly made a public statement that this person is not one of us, one of us, and does not belong to our party. And it's stupid because every party from the other political ideologies have had their mem uh, members tweet something that wasn't the best optics 
yet we were the only one actively betraying our own for it. Yeah, so throwing people under the bus for being uh, for for holding radical nationalist views, the yeah. uh, what is necessary to keep the nation afloat, and yeah. mainstream organizations just throwing them under the bus. And was that like a a new phenomenon in Finn's party, or was that very? Is that just recent? Did that only happen in twenty twenty, or was that kind of boiling up? Well, I don't know for sure because I joined that I think it was two thousand nineteen. I'm, okay. I'm not very sure about the history, but I think it had uh, went on for a couple of years before it kind of spiraled out of control. Okay. Um, and obviously, one of the big things that's going on at the moment uh, is the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Mm. Uh, Ireland takes a completely neutral stance on the whole issue. We aren't uh, we aren't in favor of Russia. We aren't in favor of NATO. Um, mm. Obviously, our politicians think differently, but that's them. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Do you think Finn? Do you think Finland's response to that was adequate, or would you would your organization see something differently to the current regime, your regime um, response to the Russia Ukraine conflict? I actually think that for once Finnish government has handled this situation pretty well because being anti-Russia is something that unites the kind of whole political spectrum in Finland except for mm. some very little minor uh, groups but being, ant being against Russia is very common here in Finland for obvious reasons we have had a quite long history with Russia and Obviously, yeah. we have lots of bad experiences from, it can be from five years ago, or it can be from 500 years ago, and it is all very negative. So we believe that for once, by taking a very uh, strong pro-Ukrainian stance, our government has handled this situation pretty well. Some people have criticized our government by saying that this is not our war, and we should not take sides between Ukraine and Russia. But we, as we in Uudenmaan actually disagree because Russia is incredibly unpredictable neighbor and any sign of aggression they show, they show towards any of their neighbors should be taken as a huge warning. I believe that the best way to secure the sovereignty of Russia's neighboring countries is by helping each other and together defending against uh, defending each other against the East aggressive bear. Very interesting, yeah. And with mm. that, um, obviously, I th isn't there territories that are under Russian occupation that were historically or that were um, mm. ancient territories that were once belonging to Finland? Would you like to come talk about that? Yes, there are kind of lot lots of land that are still under the Russian borders at the moment that used to belong to fin uh, Finland before Second World War and even before uh, the borders we were given there are there, uh, there has always been lots of land in Russia where the uh, Finno-Ugric people have lived but which have never been given uh, to Finland. Okay, and what's your, what's what's Uden Manakseli's take on that? Do they think um... What will be? What is the best course of action? Do you do you think it'll be returned to Finland soon in a hundred years and two hundred years? Do you think it'll happen? Well, of course, Uudenmaan actually says that we should have the areas control uh, where Finno Ugrics live. They should be either independent or join Finland. Of course, it is a little bit hard to predict what should be done to gain these areas back to back, to give control back to its citizens and the people living there but it is it is very hard to predict because the just just the history of the whole Russia is well hard to predict and of course at this moment trying to retake these areas through military action is completely unrealistic but yeah, I do yeah, well, yeah. But I do believe <laughs> that 
if Russia ever becomes democratic, there's a huge chance that they could just vote their way into independence. As in 2000, 2014, for example, Karelians actually tried having an independence vote, but for magical reasons, the election was stopped and all the organizers disappeared. To Russia, Finnish lands actually hold a really little value. Cities that once flourished under the Finnish rule, like Bipuri or Viaborg, have been left completely to decay and rot. And well, of course, it depends a lot on which area is in question, but majority of the area that Finno Greeks live on that, and that is controlled by Russia is completely useless to Russian Federation. Yeah, also, well, the main thing is the main thing is always to um, push on with mm. your message to always push a radical solution to things because obviously <laughs> a milk toast establishment regime policies mm. uh, that are ordained or that are given the go ahead by international finance um, mm. those those policies are just a dead end and it's up to us who are the future you know like mm. the ON uh, slogan is this is Lin on Tauchi, which means uh, the future is ours. And I I think I think those words they mean a lot to nationalist youth organizations. And there's a number of ones that are around Europe. Um mm. yours being one of the big ones as well. The meetings that you hold and the conferences and all all of your activism that you put together, I think um it'll play, it'll just come together soon. It'll just start drip feeding and then once it just keeps drip feeding there will be more and more people who are drawn to it mm. like you were yep. even saying there earlier that mm. um like you've been expanding within finland haven't you you've created different um yeah i forgot the name for it but we call them like commons uh on our end but um you've been you've been expanding into different uh, regions and territories haven't you yes we have for example, in last two months, we created two new regions in Finland, the Northern Finland region and Satakunta Pirkanmaa region. And I have been really proud at how fast they have been growing and how fast they got their action started. And it's it's a really nice thing to see that our work is actually paying off. Well, that's it. And and like, as you said, it started off, it started off as a small group of tight knit lads. You said that at the very beginning of the broadcast, and now yeah. it's expanding into all these different, um, different regions. What yeah. has the response been like from, uh, from your opponents? Um, obviously they wouldn't have taken a big liking to mm. you expanding into all these territories. They must see that as a threat. Yeah, definitely. The leftist reaction has been quite, quite uh, even stronger than that I expected a couple of years ago, because uh, all of our actions, at, or I'd say 95% of, 95 of our actions are things that we just do in, in our own, own circles. We don't, we re very rarely go to each other organizations or other political groups, events, and we, we very rarely mention other people or other organizations in our activism. And most of the time we just hold like sports and talking events in restaurants, etc., etc. And I have been very surprised at how strongly the left has reacted. I have seen quite many leftists in Twitter complain that Uudenmaan Akseli is the most um, the biggest threat in the nationalist youth scheme at the moment, and they very must good, do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have said that they must <laughs> do everything in their power to stop us. And ever since the beginning, we have had lots of attention from Antifa, and they have tried to disrupt our events very, very much. But we have found fun to ways no to, avail. To no yeah, avail. yeah. We have found ways to. To that's that, make their, that's very good. Yeah, to that's make their attempts good. futile. And you would you see these um 
these attempts to trying to disrupt your uh, your your events, your meetings. Do you think this that this will uh, this is only going to increase as you get bigger, isn't it? Yeah, of, of course. <laughs> very good, very good. It's uh, it's quite funny to see the amount of seething and coping that goes mm. on on the, the opposite end. Yeah. Imagine dedicating your entire organization to smashing this rally, to smashing yeah. that event. Yeah, yeah, very sad. Well, as long as you are achieving your goal and that your activities are going to that goal is the main thing. Mm -hmm. The yeah. radicalism is something mm -hmm. that's lacking in other European right-wing groups. A lot of the right-wing groups, quote-unquote right-wing groups, mm -hmm. um, all over Europe do lack radicalism. And it's something that's being seen now with the rise of the far right in Europe. Mm -hmm. There are groups such as ourselves who are bringing on this radical perspective to things. It's, um, mm. I can't remember exactly, but uh, uh, it's, I think it's De, ben De Benoit who talks about uh, the Nouvelle Droite, and that's very telling of that. You know, you have all these older groups such as, mm. you know, like um, the oh, Finns party, for example, and um, yeah. Finn's party who are just low energy, very <laughs> bloomery, and you compare it to the high energy nationalist youth group with them and Excelli, and it's very similar here. <laughs> now here, we don't we don't have um, any right wing groups in government. For us, it's all the same global homo that you have, <laughs> and you really just have the national party, and you have oh, you know, as mm. the youth wing of that, which are just carrying, essentially, um, politically, the yeah. entire, the entire scene. Um, yeah. But it's good. It's good to have the radicalism. It's good to have the radicalism. Mm. Do you think that? Do you think that such? How do I say? The way that um, Uden Manakseli, you said that you were. you were kicked out from the Finns party youth yes a lot of your members uh, you, at least uh yeah yeah kind of yeah i i noticed that in um sweden for example which is your another one of your neighbors and um, sweden mm. the sweden democrats kicked yeah. out uh <laughs> their youth wing as well which then became oh, AFS, became, yeah 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 which be then became a more radical version of um sweden democrats mm. so it's it's yeah. a total trend now in ireland it's it's not the case uh, we encourage mm. um the mother party encourages the radicalism that's fermented you know mm. like oigen ashunach is essentially the vanguard of the vanguard um mm. but then you have all these other groups on the continent who are just throwing out their youth wing because they're more radical and then the youth wing just maintains their radicalism their nationalism and they yep. become more popular they become more yep. energetic than their mother yep. party yep what do you think about that mm, it is um uh, it is an ex uh, interesting phenomenon as as like you said, it often ends up with the group that is being kicked out be becoming much better and active and more high energy than the old organization. I, I would not say that Unenman actually is anti Finns party organization, but we just yeah. completely decided that we want our hands off the Finnish uh, party politics. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and yeah, the high energy versus the low energy is very important reason too why many of us left because we didn't really prefer the type of action that Finns party youth back in the day had it was mostly about sitting in a bar and trying to own the lips in twitter and <laughs> and besides when Finns party youth back in 2020 broke down and the organization was ended or very good and tight and very 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 functional friend group friend group will have cr complete completely crumbled as some people decided to remain in Finns party some people 
continue the more radical alternatives and some people just completely decided to left the party politics and I believe that if we hadn't created the, uh, this, alternative, or this alternative the Udemann actually this would have happened and the functional nationalist group we had created would have definitely just been lost yeah, well, that, that's the that's the main thing. Mm. Like, uh, you guys are definitely pushing the um, Overton window further to mm. the right, you know, further to your side. Mm. And if there wasn't your group uh, in Finland, then the likes of the Finns party would just keep drifting to the left, and they just completely like mm. fall over, uh, fall over themselves. And it's the same in Ireland, where the government. Although mm. they are total global homo, there's certain things that they know they cannot do because if they do it, and if mm. they do it quickly, there will be backlash from the from young people from people in Ireland who will then vote for an alternative. Now, at the yeah. moment, uh, a lot of people are supporting Sinn Fein, but uh, that will change fairly quickly once uh, Sinn Fein cannot deliver on a single one of their promises. So, <laughs> that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. I think one good example of how Finns party back in the day didn't realize what kind of damage they were causing is that or or chairman uh, was orig originally going to be in municipal elections back in I think it's one year ago, and he was he is quite quite well liked and. I'm sure that he, he would have gained lots of votes in the elections, but they decided to throw him out of the elections because he was speaker in Ethnofutur, which is a conference organized by Sininen Aratus of Estonia, which is an organization Finns party officially collaborates with. Yeah, that's the, the irony of that, is there something yeah, else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the irony also, of that is something else. Also, if you hear some voices in the background of my room, don't worry about that. It's my dog trying to get into my room. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Um, mm. But yeah, like that was a. I mean, that's that wraps it up, really. Um, unless you have anything to add, do you think you mm. have uh, anything to add to that? Not really. Uh, I would strongly recommend following our organization's so social media. It's at Udemann, actually. You can find it in Telegram and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we post content, content quite actively. And thank you for listening. No worries. No worries. It's great to have you on. It's great to uh, give mm. a Finnish perspective on things from mm. uh, from you, you so from the deputy chair of Udemann, Axeli. Mm. So thanks a million. All right. And Gurmila uh, Gachtina. That'll wrap it up for uh, today's nationalist discussion. All right, I'll see you soon. Great, thank you for the opportunity.